Hey, everyone. Fascinating discussion and guest today around virtual spaces that feel like real places. What's next for collaboration and community with Wilo? Cliff, how are you? I'm great, Evan. Great to be with you today. Thanks. Well, great for being, uh, great to have you here. Really excited about your mission and vision. So interesting. I, I gave Wilo a try and I'm really intrigued. Before all that, maybe introduce yourself and what is the mission or the vision at Wilo? Sure. Um, I'm Cliff Pollan. I'm the co-founder of Wilo. I co-founded with a colleague, Philip Caesar, who's based in Munich, Germany. And I'm um, on the East Coast of the United States. The vision is pretty simple, that there is an enormous opportunity to help people and teams and communities to thrive. And by using the concepts of spatial computing um, and a visual sort of interface, um, we can accomplish some pretty great things that may be surprising to many. Well, uh, it, it is a surprise and a delight to, to use Wilo, but maybe describe a little bit about the application you've built, the environment. Uh, we don't have a live demo, yeah. but um, you know, this is not your Slack or your Teams or your Zoom. No disrespect to those great uh, applications. You, you've taken a different approach. We have, and it's complementary to those approaches. So I want to be clear that we think integrating with them is an important piece of um, making this type of spatial computing successful, bringing your current tool set to it. So the concept is, at some level, pretty simple. Um, we've basically created a visual space. Thank you for sharing that. And the concept is that you know, the old, a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> Looking and seeing your colleagues around you, being able to walk over to where they're sitting gives us an enormous opportunity to sort of have that sense that we are together and that visually we're taking all of that information in. So being able to do that in a very simple form and by simple form, I mean on any web browser, having a sort of physical representation of space and putting yourself in that space can accomplish the sense of both practically and, and sort of cognitively being together. Um, and then we can talk about some of the applications there, but a virtual office where our teams can work together um, a, um, a workshop where we're breaking out and coming back together. Those types of things are patterns that we know, and we take those physical patterns and we basically have visualized them. Oh, it's a fantastically interesting approach. And there have been some attempts at this in different ways over the years. Um, virtual communities, I go back to Second Life. Yes, I'm that old. I yes. had a blast uh, in those communities. Of course, gaming, this is very familiar. But how do you see yourself separated about the more modern, you know, peers out there? What What's your unique sort of uh, elevator pitch here? Yeah, I think the unique piece is how do you do the visual look at this in a way that's both practical and engaging? So the first piece is it has to give that feeling of being real, but not too real that you're trying to replicate exactly what a physical space is and have a virtual space help to guide you into how you're interacting. So just on what you're showing there, I'll point out to people, there are stairs going up to different levels. The rooms mm. are more obvious. So the first thing we've tried to do um, is create a visual space that is both engaging but takes the core concepts of visual and how you're going to project information and makes them work for the human. So that design piece has taken an enormous amount of effort and thought to make that a place where people are both comfortable and it works for them. Fantastic. And you talk a lot about not just collaboration, but community building. Uh, not an easy thing to to deliver online. 
uh, but very powerful. How do you build a sense of community? Any any success stories, examples of communities you're building? Yeah. Um, so what we've what we've seen there, and let me let me step back for a second in in trying to bring people um, into this visual world because we've heard so much about the metaverse and and various mm. pieces of that. Um, Partially, I think there's two things. I'm old enough, and I ask this question often, when was the first video call? Um, Great question. It's uh, it's in internet history. I, I can't even, it's like, when was your first phone call? You know, you just can't yeah. remember. So the first video call was in 1964. Wow. I was there. Uh, I'll give away my age. I was eight years old, and it was at the New York State Fair, the wow. World's Fair, rather, in New York. And in Bell Labs, they were making video calls. So we're about 60-odd years later, and the video call has now become the way that we think we want to collaborate. It's been great. I have, you know, Zoom is a great partner of ours respect mm. for all the video calls. Um, but we need a different medium to collaborate as we've come more virtual. So when we're talking about the time to do this, Evan, I think the reason the time is right is that the pandemic at least has us thinking differently and straining as to how does this work. And while the quote back to office and all of those debates are there, Practically, it's time for another sort of leap, just like we went from DOS interfaces to Windows interfaces. We're graphical people, and, and that tells a big story. On the, on the community side, we've had met, you know, several big success stories where um, companies are or online communities are basically chat and then, you know, response, but we don't bring them in for a, what might you think of as the virtual community center where we all can get together, we can break out, some of us can co-work, we can do an ask me anything sort of session, mm. we can send people off to experts, we can bring our champions in. So we have a number of our customers who are using this to create a different experience for people where they both can see what's around them, have agency and bring that together. We've done that well. There's a company called um, Landmark, which has trained over 3 million people and had a wow. thing in the box over 30 years. They use us in their cafe. We have, um, um, we have our, they are part of the U.S. government that actually builds community and educates people that are going to go overseas and creates a community for them to interact. So there's a number of great examples of those types of sort of online communities, a whole set in Sweden that's using it as they try and work on climate initiatives and um Open space people, if you've ever done an open space exercise, are big users. Mm. So all of that, those, those are just a handful of sort of examples of taking those large communities and creating a much more intimate, engaged setting where people get to interact and talk to each other and, and, um, and really have both productive and enjoyable time together. Wonderful. Well, it's an amazing uh, idea, uh, practical idea. And what's the typical audience? Are you going after these large global enterprises as well as small businesses or brands who might want their own communities? How do, how do you see the different diverse needs of, of those kind of constituents, well, customers? Yeah. So what we're seeing, and let me, um, is the easiest part for people is organ organizations in the case of an office that are virtual by their nature and don't have a physical space and are smaller. Those are easy early adopters because they're, they see this and they go, yes, my people are all over the country. They're all over the world. I want to bring them together. 
I don't have a place to do that. I'm on Slack, I'm on Zoom, I may be on Google Meet, but they don't have a home where we can freely interact. So those are great sort of early adopters, or we'll find pockets of those in larger companies. Um, on, the, on the community side, it's really pretty, it, in one sense, it's wide open. We have, a, we have um, one of our corporate customers has a large community in the robotics area, and mm. they're bringing together their partners and their early adopters of robots into the community. Wow. And they're loving that sort of online experience. At the same time, we'll have what I call communities of interest, not sponsored by a corporation, but people who have been together. It's a vibrant community. They either want to have some co-working time together. They want to hold what were traditional, maybe workshops or things in here. So again, those well-formed communities are, are good prospects for us um, as well. And to your point, you're trying to separate. We have large companies have used us. It's a much harder process, both for approval, mm -hmm. to get a new tool in, um, so we tend to be careful as a company how much time you invest in those because the barriers to entry these days are much higher. And that's just a practical issue. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's Slack started the same way, dealing with small groups and look at them now. Um, in terms of technology integration and, and how difficult or, or straightforward is it to turn up a community to get started? And if you are a, an SME I mean, it's a kind of business, how do you integrate it into your existing workflow or tools? Sure. So um, it's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. um, you, we have um, catalogs of pre-built spaces that are oh, wow. diverse, and people just grab one of those. They can easily um, come in and bring their colleagues in. Learning Wheelo, the big thing I say is you have to learn how to move yourself, which takes most people about a minute to figure out how to move from room to room and knock on a door and those things. Let me just say these are very simple avatars and they're not walking around. You just click mm. and you're in a room. And that speed has been incredibly important for most of the use cases. So onboarding is pretty simple. Having a space, it's always there. Um, and so making it happen either for communities or for a virtual office is very straightforward um, to, to get people up and running. We obviously have a lot of sort of uh, tools and things to just help them get comfortable. Um, Fantastic. Evan, I'll, I'll add one other thing there. You do things like you name the rooms. You can put resources in the rooms. So one of the things I just want to add in getting people um, one thing we can do virtual is we can project information to people. We used to do that. We used to, quote, have the war room, do not erase. And there was sets of information about a project. We can radiate and project that information in a space. So whether it's your OKRs or whether mm. in a room, it's a project room with the relevant resources, or you can mouse over my avatar you can see my schedule for the day. You can see the JIRA tickets that I may be working on. Mm -hmm. um, you can know whether I'm having a good or bad day by looking at my avatar. And I may say, I'm really tired today or I'm feeling under the weather. Just projecting mm -hmm. that information is incredibly valuable for how we interact with our, with our colleagues. Wonderful. What sort of feedback have you gotten from members? You must have lots of interesting stories and anecdote. And how do you how do you take on that feedback to kind of build it into the product and evolve it over time? I must you guys must be moving uh, pretty quickly. It's first of all wonderful because something as simple as this, hearing people say it's working, and they're amazed that it is doing what it's doing. Let me give a couple of examples there and then talk about how we take um, the feedback. What we hear from people is, I didn't expect it to be this powerful. All of a sudden I come in 
and I'm feeling connected because I can see everybody around me. The worst part, let's say, of a Zoom breakout room is it feels like you're being put in isolation and you're put there and then yanked back out. Just as Mm. an example, people just move themselves. They can see everybody around them. Their colleagues are there to get and give support. So they, they say that it dramatically changes how I feel. By the way, there's cognitive science. There's the connected part of our brain where we do the best work. And when we have spatial awareness, that fires off. Um, And I could take people through the science of that. So what we hear from people is we are really able to feel more comfortable with our colleagues. We're there and it's easy to support them and understand what's going on. And if we have to rally, we can. Um, We have people who um, are... The, the feedback comes in all sorts of forms. They can drop into our office anytime, which they do. And they give us like live feedback and come in and we talk to them. And then we are basically share our roadmap, get their input and are constantly iterating and, you know, and bringing new features. We just released three or four critical features today to our users um, based on their feedback. And that, again, is just exciting when you're getting that feedback. Very fun. Talk about some of the partnerships. You mentioned Zoom, mentioned lots of integrations. Uh, I believe Zoom's an investor as well as a partner. Is that right? How does that relationship work? Yeah. So um, Zoom and uh, Atlassian are both partners and investors. Um, That doesn't we're not, quote, exclusive with them by mm. any means, but we get to work closely. So in Zoom, we've built a Zoom app that people can use with Zoom. They can, um, and that app basically takes a lot of our functionality and sits it on top of Zoom. So that's been a wonderful piece. And we're part of a bundle called Essential Apps where those are available, about 10 great apps to people who are um, fit a class of about uh, uh, five to 10 million Zoom users. With Atlassian, we built an integration into Atlassian, but overall we integrate well with Slack where you can use the Slack messaging while you're in Wheelo and our room resources where you can put content we can take any URL. So it could be a Microsoft document on OneDrive. We've done great integrations with Miro and Mural, those whiteboards, which are so relevant, Mm. as well as with Google, both Google Workspace and Google Calendar. So our vision is those tools, you want to bring them to your workplace or to your community. And we have worked to do, I think, really good integrations to start opening. More to do there, but all of that is in place already. Well done. And talk about your design ethos. It's it's really clever and, and appealing, interesting. Who's the mastermind behind the graphic design yeah. the interface? It's it's really fun. It's it's taken a lot. So our our concept is that we have a thing of a space and then we have rooms that are and and we think a lot about different rooms. Is this a shared workspace? Is it a quiet workspace? Is it a guest? Um, is it um, the water cooler? Is it the f- outdoor fire pit? Is it a collaboration room? So having different types of rooms and we use those concepts to try and put those together when we're building different spaces. And then the avatars are rich but simple. Um, It's a picture in a circle, but associated Mm. with your avatar can be your calendar, the work you're doing, your work profile. I hate email. I love getting messages on Slack. (laughs) I'm slow in the morning. I'm good in the evening. Whatever those are, we're projecting that on as part of your avatar, which signals a lot of information to people. Um, We have a, we had a wonderful designer and team um, uh, um, that has worked on that. Um, 
Amy and Stefano, two people who have collaborated to both do the spaces and a bunch of the UA, UI design. Um, and it really, the, the, the piece I can say is it's, it's fun in a business and practical way and it works, but it's very rich. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. You have an interesting bird's eye view of the, you know, the industry. What are you seeing as far as the return to work or hybrid work? It's been still a bit of a mess uh, post pandemic. Uh, I don't think any two companies have the same policies. Um, but what do you see? What do you hear in the field on what people are settling on? Or are we? Are we just going to have this really strange, fragmented world for, you know, for the foreseeable future? I think we're going to have a bit of a fragmented world for the next couple of years. This is a big change. Um, and I think there, you know, it, the pandemic obviously opened up our eyes faster than before that we can do this. But for many people, it felt like a loss of control. And the fact that it didn't work the way they were used to working caused some issues. And we've seen some people that were very enthusiastic about remote work pull back from that. And I think the pendulums come back far. I think when we build these solutions out like we are doing, you know, I, I think we're going to see Google Glasses or Apple Vision Pro or Meta. It's going to take some time, but this spatial interface, these rich interfaces are going to help as people who have worked in these environments see it. We will bring it back and people would be taking advantage of the fact of a workforce that could be anywhere, work-life balance, so people aren't doing some of the commutes all the time that they need to do, and, um, and we'll be respecting climate, which is a big issue. So I think there are things, Evan, that will bring us back, and that spatial computing does so many positive things through presence and other pieces, that people are going to get it, and that. But we're in a multi-year, you know, five, you know, two to ten-year transition. Um, as people um, sort of see it, it starts to work and it gets embraced. Yeah, big changes ahead, and you know, this whole idea of virtual, you know, in three D or VR. AR environments hasn't taken off, despite best efforts recently and over the last decades. Uh, I, I, you actually have a community that looks and feels like things people know, like video games or yep. collaboration tools. But do, do you think there is a desire to work in, in a real virtual environment with with glasses or goggles or or Meta, you know, Meta VR? Is it Apple Apple VR? Is this just too science science fiction? Um, you know, we have, um, I, I think it's solving a different problem than mm. we're solving. And I think we can solve our problem with today's tech without mm. any Google, you know, or Apple Vision Pro. There will be places where that eventually plays in. But what we're trying to say is you're with everybody else you can see them, you can start to interact. It's gonna change how you're doing and you can wear these glasses, not, you know, and I think that works. I know it works, we've seen it work. And I think that's the natural bridge. The metaverse piece, I think, if you wanna go to the, you know, to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro and see what that feels <laughs> like, that's different. We're trying to, the spatial part here is real. Um, the more that people get exposed to it, they see there is a today easy solution and it solves different but very critical problems of how teams can thrive, whether those are communities or whether those are you know internal teams. Um, I think we're seeing people just um, get it once they're in it. It's just it's a mystery to them that it could work. But to your point, I don't want to go into the gamers and the people who have done this, 
this is an easy association. Those of us who may not have, you know, we may have done Second Life, but we're not, <laughs> you know, we're uh, we are a little bit different because we're not using some of those experiences. Um, we are using Google Maps. We are using Zillow. These are uh-huh. somewhat spatial applications. We're using Yelp to find a good restaurant near us. So people are starting to get used to the fact that spatial is important in terms of those types of applications, including weather apps when we're getting hurricanes and tornadoes and those things. Yes, more of uh or less of those, more Wheelo spaces, please. And we actually met in person at a conference. I uh, heard you speak. Do you think every conference should have a virtual space or a virtual community surrounding it, like like Wheelo, a Wheelo space? I, I uh, do. Is, I, I hmm. do. We could do so much to bring other people in and to open up these opportunities and also to be that much more, quote, diverse in our thinking. So, We traveled to Florida. It was a great conference. We get to do some things there. But what happens if there were more people that could interact in those discussions and break out? And even if they just did their piece online, what I want to be clear about is hybrid is hard, really hard. Mm -hmm. but, But thinking about some separate tracks that could benefit from the speakers and the pieces, but maybe they get to process afterwards as a group. What did Evan share? What did Cliff share on that panel? And then let's have some good interactive, not a broadcast with three questions afterwards. Let's let people dive in and sort of break in smaller groups and come back together. I'm I'm a big proponent that we can rock that if we set the right approach to it. Well, that's a mic drop moment. So thanks so much for you know sharing the vision amazing mission. And um, yeah, I'll have to immerse myself in a wheel of space soon now that I have a little time over the summertime. Look forward to signing up. It's, you have a, it's a freemium service, right? So there's no barriers to, uh, to joining. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much, Evan. Um, I look forward to seeing you in Wheelo. Please drop in and, and continuing the conversations. I'll do it. And thanks, everyone. Thanks for uh, watching and pretty popular episode. Lots of people interested in this topic. So take care. Bye-bye. Bye now.